everybody, this is Dave with Pulp Alley, and we've had a lot of questions about using clear bases. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we do it, uh, and maybe you all can share your suggestions and ideas as well. Now, up front, I just want to say that I would really encourage you to use the type of bases that work best for you. Uh, some folks really like uh, different types of bases, and that's cool. Uh, I happen to use clear bases because that's what I like. That doesn't mean it works for everybody. Uh, out here you'll see what I'm talking about. and These are the Pulp Alley Ultra and Viso bases is what these are. But you'll also find some clear bases through Sally Forth and I think Litco makes some. And I think a lot of other places make them. But these are specifically, oh, oh I also want to point out that folks can uh, make these themselves. You know, we originally just started off making these because we wanted them like this. Um, and then we figured, well, people keep asking, you know, where would we get our bases? So we will make some for, for folks to buy as well. But also, they're, they're, there are players that make their own as well. So you'll see, um, you know, the thing that I really like about clear base is I'll just say that no matter where you are, there you are. Uh, whether you're in the desert or the jungle or the Arctic or uh, no matter where you are, your base fits that setting. So let's talk about how we do it. Um, one of the things that I like to do is trim off the metal uh, tab that comes on the bottom of the foot. Uh, so here's a figure that has been trimmed off and here's one that hasn't. So I'll show you how we do it. Uh, this is what I like to use. I really like nail clippers. I find these to be about the, the best thing around when it comes to uh, trimming bases. Stick it in there and just give it a snip. Uh, I guess I should recommend that uh, you use uh, safety goggles or eye protection when you're doing this because you're going to have metal bits flying off in every direction. So that's pretty good. That's that's. Uh, I'm gonna trim some of this because his foot is kind of at an odd angle. I'm gonna trim that little bit there, and then the last thing that I like to do is I like to shave just a wee bit off. It's a little thick, so I'm gonna shave oh that much off, and it's a little bit thick, so I'm gonna shave just a little bit more. Okay like so. And that's pretty much ready to go on a base. Look how well he stands even all, all on his own there. I'm going to do one last check around just to make sure I have uh, it cut down to the, the shoe. Uh, you can get too close, but I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to show you gluing. So we'll do another fella. So we just trim around the foot. Uh, it's not complicated. It's not difficult. Um, some people talk about it taking a long time, but I really don't find that it takes very long to do. I think back in the old days when I did uh, metal bases and things like that, uh, I probably spent more time on bases then than I do now. So, a little bit there. I'm going to switch to my straight and get a little bit off that. Okay, I'm going to trim it down the height. Take that off a little bit. Okay, 
see one little shard there that I'd like to pull off. Bessie thinks I overly uh, clippy, but I don't know what that means, overly clippy. Okay, so there's two of them I did. The next thing you're going to want to do is get your uh, clear bases. Let's see what we have here. Get a couple out of here. So one of the things that you want to make sure you do is avoid getting too much super glue on because that can cause a clogging effect. So let me make sure I have some super glue coming out here. I'm going to put a dab on this foot, dab on that foot. I can see it there. Now, before I put it on there, I'm going to test it and I'm just going to tap it down against this cardboard. That helps to pull off the excess and then I'll put him down. One of the things I like to do is use a model to, uh, to, be the, uh, uh, to hold the, the figure in place. So that's it. I'm going to do the next guy here. A little bit on the foot, a little bit on the foot. Okay, you don't want to use too much. A little bit goes a long way. Dab it. Oh, I don't think I got enough on that one foot over there. Oh, yeah, I do. All right, and then I'm going to set him there. Let's see, who's somebody that has a nice... I'm going to use this guy to hold him. And that'll be my base. Okay. So those fellas, and if you look over here, here are some that I've already done. Um, I'll see if I can find one that has a fog effect on it. No. This one almost maybe. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of a fog there. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, you won't really see it. And definitely when it's, on, when it's in play and things like that, you'll almost never see it. I would say the big thing, make sure you don't use too much super glue. It's the excess super glue that uh, I think causes that fog effect. So just watch how much you're using and you should be fine. So there was two of them done. Uh, I'll add those to my stack. I want to give a big thank you to Bessie, the world's most dangerous Bessie, for painting all these figures for me. She does almost all of my painting now because I'm uh, too blind to actually paint. But she does a wonderful job, so I'm thankful for that. Let's see if these guys are done. So there's that one. They can add, be added into the stack now. And there's that guy. So there's uh, two of my guys based and ready to go into action. All right, boys and girls, I think that's all. If you have any questions about it, and I'm not going to go over like all of the different reasons why I prefer these specific bases. Uh, again, use the bases that work best for you. Uh, that's, that's all I'll say on the matter. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dave with Paul Valley. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.